Mark Griffith here and welcome to RC Hacker. First up, I just wanna say thanks to all the people welcoming me back. Circumstances have changed and I'm in Australia again with the chance to make lots more videos. So uh, let's go. Today we're doing the nonocopter and I'm gonna show the PID values and how we set up the custom mixer on this. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly and what I'll also do, I'll take stills of all the settings and I'll put that on, webs on my website and I'll put a link to that up here. I'll try one of these new cards and see if that works for everyone. Let me know if that works or not. But I'll, there'll be a website so you don't have to watch a video over and over to get these settings. So they'll all be written down. Right, let's do this. All right, hopefully we can see all this now. First up, I'll start with the PID settings. People were asking for that. You'll have to excuse the beeping going on in the background as well. So I'll just go to the PI editor and uh, show you each of the PI settings there. We've got gain and limit 80, 90, and then 25, 20. Elevator is the same, and rudder is slightly different. So there are PI settings. Now we'll get on to the interesting bit. Now, typically when you set these up, you'll load a motor layout and, uh, and then go to your mixer. Now, what I did to start with on this one was I loaded, I think it was a quadcopter X just as a, as a starter. And then you go to this show, if you go to show motor layout, it actually shows a picture of the motor layout and you can see which which ones are which. Number one, two, three, four, five, and the directions as well. And this is, if you edit the custom mixer, this will change, okay? So I'll go just, and if you click on next, you can see each individual motor as well um, and how they relate to each other. So it's just an informational thing and it's good to go back to and, and have a look at each time. Now, if we go to the mixer editor, what we've got is channel one, and these are the percentages of response that you get when you manipulate that, each of the throttle, aileron, elevator, and so on. So if we increase the throttle, that motor will increase power like at 100% rate. If we give it aileron, it'll, it'll give it negative 71%. And elevator 71 and rudder is 100 here. So these are basically values that you might have on a quadcopter because I've got channel one is up the top left corner of my multi rotor. I think it's a standard thing, but that's just the way I laid it out. And you can change these values of what as well according to if if your if your multi rotor is longer than it is wide, you might you might make the uh, elevator values a bit a bit less rather than uh, as high as 71. Anyway, keep moving on. Go to the next one. So you can see that channel two, it's just the aileron has switched around and the elevator still has the same value. Go to channel three and with the next motor around if we're going clockwise and our elevator has changed while the aileron value has stayed the same. And go to change again. And of course, uh, our, so now our aileron has changed. Note also that the rudder changes as we go through those four channels as well. So depending on whether yours one way or the other, whether those motors slow down or speed up. Now, a lot of this I did by trial and error there is a mathematical way to do it, but I started with the quadcopter and then I, mo then I modified it. Basically, I added a fifth channel and this is the motor that's on the Yaw servo and I wanted that to increase as I increased the throttle, so that's at 100%. And I also want it to change as I do the elevator as well, but not so much. So it's a, the weighting is not quite as big, it's only it's only 63 and it's not super high. Now having that aileron as one and rudder, rudder as one makes it practically zero, but it just lets it, uh, I think, 
I put the values of one there just so it'll show up correctly on the mixer layer. If you have a zero there, then it doesn't show up properly on the mixer drawing there. So the motor speed itself doesn't actually change with rudder input. Elevator, with elevator input, this motor will change and given that it's way out in the back, it, it does it does change quite a bit. And with any aileron input, because this is in the middle and on the center line, we don't want the motor speed to change at all when we give it aileron input. So that's set as a one. And then we go to the next page. This is our rudder. And basically this depends on how your servo is set up. What I find, what I do, I set it all up and then I make sure, uh, first thing I do, I turn it all on and change this value. It's either going to be positive or negative, negative. And I've boosted this up to 110, so there's got a little bit of extra rudder input. And the offset is basically, I think that's the value where the, the rudder sort of stays by default. I haven't really messed around with that one. I don't understand it fully, but that's the value that I ended up with that seems to work well for me. Now, the one thing to note about the mixer and designing stuff like this, it's very forgiving. So you, you can make changes and it'll fly pretty good. You know, it will try and correct for itself. And, and what I'd find, what I'd go out and do, I'd do a line of sight flight takeoff and I'd do quite rapid rolls and uh, quite rapid side to side movements, forwards and back, just to make sure everything's nice and, and, and it looks good. And if you give it a good throttle punch, that it doesn't tilt forward or tilt to the right or anything like that. And if it does, you can either change the center of gravity by moving, in this case, the battery around, or you can actually change these values as well to get different results. So when you give it full power, you might decide that you don't want the, uh, the rudder motor to actually give full power along with the other ones. You might have motors that are more dedicated just to lifting and don't do anything else they don't perform any function for, for a roll or pitch or anything like that. And you can configure that in there as well. For instance, if we wanted to put a big lift motor right in the middle, like if we had a configuration, just say we put a motor underneath the KK2 here with a great big uh, motor just dedicated for lifting, we'd go to our mixer and probably we add another channel, of course. And what I'll do, I'll add, well, strictly speaking, we should leave everything at zero except for the throttle. And increase the throttle right up to 100%. And call that done. And then if I look at my mixer edit, uh, my um, show my motor layout now, well, unfortunately it doesn't show that at all. but. If we go back to our mixer editor, go to our new channel that we put in, channel seven. Okay, it was a servo. So we'll change that to an ESC and see if that, there we go. We've got a motor in the middle there. Now it does have a direction printed on it that, it, that the, the propeller should be going, but you really only need to take note of that if that is going to help with any of your, your control and that sort of thing. So there you go. I, I would like to make a multi-rotor with one big propeller right in the middle and more on the outside. You probably have to counteract the torque of that big one in the middle, maybe have two stacked on top of each other, but it'll be an interesting exercise anyway. Another thing the custom mixer can be used is to configure you can basically configure any sort of aircraft as well and control surfaces like elevators and ailerons and V-tails. Basically any place you can imagine and put a control surface, you can set up in the custom mixer on the KK2. And I've seen some people do hybrid uh, multi-rotors with, with engines and with elevators and other control surfaces as well on them. So uh, one copter is an example with one motor in the middle and then the control is, is done by having uh, control surfaces just below that in a similar way that, say, uh, one of the old V2 rockets used to work. So 
it's very flexible and really good for prototyping as well because you can go and adjust this in the field you can really quickly adjust it you don't need a computer and all that sort of thing and really good for experimenting with and i will continue using kk2s for this reason now i've just been playing with the 32-bit processor in this case a nays 32 and that has some real uh, it's amazing the fly compared to the kk2 uh, I was very impressed on the first flights with this thing. And you can do custom mixes on this as well. But the only disadvantage with advantages with the custom mixes on this is you need to uh, enter those custom mixes via the command line interface. Via in uh, the case I've been using, I've been using Clean Flight. Anyway, that's a little introduction to the custom mixer on the KK2. Like I said, I'll make a website for this. I'll make a page on my website for this so you can have a look at those settings if you want to copy this design. Anyway, cheers. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.